Hello, my fellow have a separate bank account just for buying car parts that certain people don't know about, brothers. Welcome to Matt's Garage. Uh, last time the engine was toast, this time I've got a solution and I'm gonna install the Tom's EFI stainless fuel tank. So last time we were in here, that motor is toast, is gone skis. I mean, it could get rebuilt, but that costs a fortune with labor these days. So I looked at a bunch of different options, including buying a blueprint engine, which I gotta be honest with you, the prices are just insane. It's like eight grand delivered with tax. So forget about it. I went on a website, you guys have probably seen if you've ever looked for rebuilt transmissions or engines called XP1. They have the nicest looking Reman website and I took a chance and I ordered a short block from them. They couldn't do a long block because there's a shortage of the E303 cams for the HOs. So I just ordered the short block and then I ordered a bunch of goodies which are on the floor back here. I got some AFR heads, you know, new balancer, new oil pump, a few other parts, uh, roller rockers. Uh, and then I have back ordered a, comps, a comp cam sort of trucky RVE cam that's really torque centric with uh, roller uh, lifters. Uh, that doesn't ship until mid-November. Right now it's mid-October, so I gotta wait a month for that. In the meantime, gotta keep busy, so let me clear my workbench, clean some stuff up, and then let's assemble this fuel tank. All right, let's yard this thing over here. Oh, it's covered in stuff. Got a lot of good baffling in here. That's good. It's kind of dusty though. It's not light, I gotta be honest. Fuel pump for EFI tanks. That's the sock with the tiniest little star thing in there. Oh, there's instructions, yay. Measure the depth of D, S minus D, B, one return line, D, okay, cool. I think this is pre-set up for the depth. This is so much smaller than the tank sink one though. That's nice, it's already cut to the size. making sure it's not bottoming out and looking at the... That is not at all near the bottom of the tank. It's probably an inch and a half, two inches taller. Oh, but I guess you take this off, put the sock on. It's pretty close. There's a little nipple at the bottom. So I was seeing to this, but with the sock and the, that's probably okay. All right, so that is that part. These fittings, these are straight cut. These MPT are straight cut. MPT. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Sending unit. That's okay. It just needs a gasket. Perfect, okay. And then I got my bag of smalls here. These rubbers are probably for the straps. So I'm gonna go take the old tank out so I can figure out my orientation and fuel line lengths. I need to drain this. Maybe I should do it electrically. I like that idea. I got my power probe hooked up to the Bronco's battery, which is not currently in the Bronco. And let's hope for no sparks, shall we? All 
All right, that's done, skis. It's about two and a half gallons. Okay. The old tank is set aside and actually um, already up for sale on Marketplace. I'm asking 300, which I think is actually a pretty good deal considering that tank was basically new. I mean, the, the fuel pump itself costs like 200, so. Try, you know, try to be reasonable. All right, so that goes there. This is not a snappy one. I, mean, I don't think that's going anywhere, but I like that satisfying snap sound, but I'm not gonna get it out of this one. Now, for these, I typically use this aviation forma gasket. The nice stuff about this is it stays soft, so you don't, um, you know, you don't have to pry it up when you, if you need to access it to service it. The bad part is it smells like death, but it works. It seals, it seals well. It does what it's supposed to do, which, you know, these days, it's all you can ask for. Hoses can work in this direction. They'll just kind of because this they clear this. This won't pinch them, and if it does, it's going to be minor. So I'm going to shoot it out this way. Try to reuse my hoses. To float. Now the instructions said to. Um, Spray the float contacts with uh, electronics cleaner. I already did that. Interesting, this rubber is gasket. This gasket's rubber. I guess it's not that interesting. I just wonder why they have, this one's cork, this one's rubber. Why? Why do you make that decision? I'm just wondering. I can't ask a question? Jeez. Is this North Korea? I'm just going to leave one screw out for now and put a ground on it, on that one screw. So that's that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest is simple. Put some schmutz on here, tighten those down, vent, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go get it into the truck and we'll see you when, uh, when it's buttoned up. I ended up reversing the orientation. It was just too awkward getting through this bump. So put it, and plus my, both of my um, fuel lines are too short and I don't have any spare. So I need to order some fuel line. I got bloodied. Um, always use weather pack connectors. I mean, you don't have to, I always do. I love these things. They just make everything so much more serviceable. Like when you want to take the tank out, you just unclick this, drop the tank. So I need to get some caps, some fuel lines, and then I'll throw it in. I wanted to give a visual of the difference between these two tanks. You know, the, the 23 gallon really, I mean, it looks like it sits a lot taller, but it actually bumps up onto the body. So, whereas the stock one sort of is a few inches below the body. So the ultimate bottom position of them is not that different, is what I'm told, but we'll see when I get it installed. Also, I figured out why my heater motor wasn't working and it was a bad ground. I have updates. My short block has arrived. This is great news, it came earlier than I thought. 
City Motor Supply, but the website is XP1. I'll give you more info in a separate video, but that's here, that's good. Now I gotta get whatever from that one I need over onto this one, get this onto the engine stand, get that onto a dolly and list that for sale and it'll sit in my garage for the rest of my life. Now, um, I made a couple of brackets. Let me show you what the deal is with these. With the Tom seats, if you're running a retractable seatbelt, it hits right in this region right here. So I made these brackets, basically gonna go like that, relocate that over, and then it will clear. Also, I've made a decision. I'm going to ditch the tailgate mounted spare tire carrier. I like it, I think it's super cool, but because it interferes with this, I have, I'm going a different direction. That's gonna be a surprise for another video for what I'm gonna do for a spare tire. But for now, I'm just gonna get the seat, I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna get the seat bolted in and uh, get that wrapped up. I'm also gonna get shocks for this thing. The rear Toms, I'm using front shocks for the rear because it's got the eye to stem configuration in the 66, not the eye to eye that the rest of you guys probably have. So I'm actually just gonna go pick up some stock Monroe shocks and see how those work. All right, those are installed nice and, I don't know, what can I say? It's a relocation bracket. Okay, I need to take some pictures so I can sell this. Oh, oh well. Satisfying sound, isn't it? When the tire bounces. All right, let me get these brackets off. Don't need those anymore. I don't have video of me assembling the bench seat um, front legs because I did it at Phil's house at Tom's, but installing the seat's pretty easy. Take out your existing bolts, take the new bracket, put it where your old bolts were. Gotta put your seat belts in. That was dumb. <sighs> Pull your seat back into the position where it's locked down on there. Just right about there. There you go. So that's locked down. Now, for the front, you gotta prop up the, I'll show you. You can actually see that leg sort of kicked out. So you need to, and then you need to prop up the seat or have somebody hold it up. And then, because otherwise it just kind of flops and gets angled. So you gotta pull it up in position, mark the holes, pull the seat out, drill the holes, put the seat back, and then tighten them down. It's pretty simple. I went to go install the seat, but notice the bushing that goes between the seat stud and the like the leg bracket is destroyed. So I need to go see if I can find one of these at a hardware store or something, or cobble something together that does the same thing. Um, not gonna install the fuel tank today because I want my transmission jack to do that because I'm lazy now. Uh, and then my motor, like I said, is here, but my cam doesn't come till mid-November, so we'll see. In the meantime, I'm gonna do like little odds and ends, like fixing the leak on the um, oil pan, taking all the front dress off, measuring the new harmonic balancer compared to the one I have, getting this on the engine stand, you know, just working through the details. I gotta figure out if I can do the whole indexing of the bell housing with the motor not on an engine stand. Cause I can't, I need the back of the motor. Is there a way I can hold the motor from the front? These are the types of things I need to figure out. Um, but that will all be later or next time on Matt's Garage.